In this video, I want to show you guys the 0 to 100k blueprint for Shopify dropshipping and e-commerce in 2019. So sit back, take notes, and let's get right to the video. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jeffrey, back again with another e-commerce video. And today we want to talk about your blueprint to um, for e-commerce from 0 to 100k and how you can make over 6 figures and beyond for e-commerce this year and Shopify dropshipping. Without further ado, let's get right to the content. So before we begin, I want to thank you all for 1k subs. Um, we finally did it and um, thank you everyone again for all the support. Um, we are still doing giveaways for um, you know store reviews and um, you know one-on-one -on -one calls so make sure to like the video, comment down below, um, let me know what you see next and subscribe for more content related to e-commerce, affiliate marketing and just making money online in general. I also want to let you guys know that mentorship is now going to be open. Um, I'm, o I'm only opening to just a few spots just because I'm working on other projects. I'm you know, kind of busy doing other stuff as well. So I want to keep the uh, mentorship students to a minimum. So if you're interested, um, there's going to be a link down below to schedule a discovery call for free, um, 15 minutes. And um, just to you know, get an idea of you know, what stage you're at, your mentality, your experience, your budget, and you know, things like that. So um, let's get right to the video. So just a disclaimer before we begin to uh, the content, um, this video will actually not teach you about the specifics of you know getting to 100k, like how to run and scale Facebook ads, you know using CBO or whatever like that, um, you know how to find winning products or you know things like that because it will be way too long and um, it'll be like over 40 minutes or so. So um, that's for for another time. But this video will give you an overview of uh, what to do when you scale an e-commerce store in 2019 and actually build a brand. So I'm going to be showing you an overview of how to build an actual brand and how to kind of uh, kind of get long longevity over you know the course of a few years for your brand and you know keep getting sales. So if that's interesting, let's keep going. Also be sure to watch to the end because you don't want to miss out on the steps because you might actually miss out and um, not know what to do. So be sure to watch it until the end. So stage one, we're going to begin at the testing phase. So what I recommend if you're starting out is to make a general store with more of a branded feel. So um, not just a typical DB theme or Brooklyn theme, but actually take the time to um, you know create some really nice looking photos. You can use um, different websites for um, for free, like use photos like um, from Pixel Bay or Pixels or Unsplash, things like that to get uh, these custom photos that are high definition. And make sure you don't use words like gadgets, trendy, and deals because those are to 2018 and they don't work anymore in 2019. But you know, if you want to do it, that's fine, but I really do not recommend it. So second of all, you're going to have to find a winning product. So something that's already proven if you're a beginner, that's your fastest way to success. And there are lots of product research tools available right now. So for example, trending products, we covered that in, the, in my video. You can use Big Spy, Ad Spy, Ali Shark, um, Pexta, um, the comma feed strategy that we used. Um, things like that. So we're not going to cover too much in detail on this video. You have to verify that it's a winner. Um, usually this will be the case if you've had at least two sales within 48 hours or you're already profitable on day one. So that's usually a good sign that you're already profitable. At that point, um, you can start scaling from there. But uh, basically you can test these products using CBO or auto bid ad sets. So you can do um, $10 a day or so, 5 to $10 a day and 10 ad sets or so, that still works. Or you could use a CBO at uh, about $100 and um, you know, test about five to eight ad sets. Um, for CBOs, um, I read that somewhere in somewhere that um, the less of the ad sets, the better because it's going to distribute it more evenly. So if you want to test CBOs, you can test less ad sets. So don't put like 20 ad sets in there. Just put about five to eight ad sets. Um, at this point, you're just going to fulfill with AliExpress as per usual. Um, you don't have to move out of AliExpress just yet because you don't know um, whether the product is a winning or not. So um, you're still testing the waters basically. So that's going to be the testing phase. Stage two is going to be the prospecting phase. And here you're just trying to increase the ad spend by horizontally scaling. So adding more ad sets in your campaigns. Um, you're going to be adding more new interests that are really similar to the ones that are working. For example, if um, a lot of you know, um, interests that are related to brands are working, you're going to be adding more brand interests. Or if like more abstract terms like, you know, swimming or whatever or hiking are doing well, you can do other um, terms like, uh, I don't know, like mountain gear or whatever, if you're in hiking niche, uh, things like that. And at this point, you should already have found some kind of wedding creative um, during the testing phase. And if not, you're going to keep finding one until you get one that's preferably, um, you know, two to three percent or more of a click-through rate. Basically, in this prospecting phase, you're seeing 
if the product would be profitable at a larger scale. So that's why we, we, we need to do the prospecting phase because we don't want to dump a bunch of budget into our, our products um, you know, without knowing that it's going to work at higher budgets. So at this point, you're also going to be slowly transitioning out of AliExpress. So you're going to be looking into you know, sourcing agents or whatever, which we'll talk about later on. Or um, you could find you know, other suppliers or Alibaba, things like that. Or um, alternatively, you can actually contact a supplier and you know, kind of work out some little details. For example, um, better shipping times, better logistics, um, you know, private, custom packaging and things like that. I would also recommend ordering the product in yourself and make your own video. Um, this is going to be really simple. You, it doesn't have to be, you know, super high quality or high definition. Um, preferably, you want to have something kind of like uh, first hand. So just you filming the product in use. Um, that could be really useful as well um, because it's more personalized and um, it feels like the customer is actually holding the item themselves. So it makes it a lot uh, personalized and uh, just realistic that way, not just an ad. At this point as well, once you find that it's uh, kind of a winner, you're going to be using a lot more upsell apps. For example, frequently bought together, Volume discounts, um, I forgot the name, but it's called like Ultimate Special Offers or I forgot. And there's another one called Vitals40, um, which I'll have a link down below because that's probably one of my favorite apps for, so far in Shopify. So I would definitely recommend that as well. You should also start your retargeting once you're consistently getting 10 plus orders a day, just because you want to get your customers back to your funnel and make the sale. So you're going to do retargeting and abandoned cart sequences, um, you know, email marketing. And um, you know you could retarget people who viewed the content, added to cart, um, initiate checkout, or uh, just basically hasn't purchased. Stage three is going to be the graduate scaling phase, so uh, it's going to be kind of like scaling, but not full scaling yet. Um, so this is basically when you have a confirmed winner, um, and when you want to look out of um, moving out of AliExpress, basically. Um, at this point, you're going to be horizontally scaling and vertically scaling. But it's important to note that you're going to be doing this slowly because at the same time, you're also working on logistics and um, just better uh, customer experience at this point. So um, you want to increase your ad spend, but you know, gradually because um, you're looking for improvements in logistics and working on your branding. So packaging, um, uh, better logistics, better shipping times, better communication, stuff like that. So at this point, you'll be finding a private sourcing agent to work with or you could use Alibaba if you want, but I would use the private sourcing agent um, or um, start basically building a relationship um, with suppliers and this will help you with your shipping times, your compared better prices um, for your cost of goods and your, your brand and packaging, which is very important in 2019. So uh, make sure you take note of that because in 2019, it's all about building a brand. So if you don't have a brand at this point, it's going to be really hard to thrive and um, get sales. So um, reinvest your profits as well into more branding material so make sure you have enough capital to um, purchase, you know, custom packaging, you know, thank you letters um, and things like that as well. And you also want to be niching down and make a store surrounding your winner. Um, basically, you should be already doing that in the uh, prospecting phase or when you already find a winner, you know, getting a template order there, you should already be niching down. So that's what you should do. And um, we'll talk about a bit later um, kind of what to do specifically. So stage four is going to be the full scaling phase and you, re you should already have all the branding material in place, your packaging, your custom letters, um, your good shipping times, competitive prices, things like that. As mentioned, your good shipping times, your good quality in your products, you've done quality control of your sourcing agents. And for full scaling phase, we're gonna be using CBOs at higher budgets because CBOs actually work a lot better than auto bids at higher budgets. Um, I've read somewhere from a book, I actually purchased a book um, not too long ago, but basically it says that the higher budget of CBO, the more consistent it is. So that's going to be a secret for CBOs and a golden nugget for you guys. So if you want to scale, definitely use CBOs. Um, usually this means $300 or more a day. And inside you're going to be spending, you're going to be using about three to six ad sets or eight at a maximum. And then you're going to move, uh, preferably if you want, you're going to be moving into click funnels for your landing pages or any other landing pages uh, or plugins as well. Um, there are some as well for Shopify, um, I think it's an application, but I will use ClickFunnels because I've been looking into that recently and it's actually really effective. Uh, I will provide a free training sometime later, so it's going to be probably linked down below. Uh, I'll probably be giving you as well like a free template for, you, for your uh, e-commerce store. Um, I'll also be making a video surrounding ClickFunnels and how to use it for e-commerce. So, Comment down below if you want to see that happen. Um, basically, we're gonna do this because it's gonna lead to better conversion rates and it's just an easier process 
um, when you're checking out and securing the sale. Uh, a lot more upsell options, um, very much more straightforward, um, more beautiful landing pages, stuff like that, and uh, increased site speed. During this phase, you'll also be looking to fulfillment centers, um, although this is optional because you're already looking into shipping, better shipping time to your sourcing agent. And if you're shipping to Europe, um, chances are that they're already kind of used to the short shipping times. I mean, the longer shipping times, sorry. So you don't really need it unless um, the bulk or the majority of your orders are from the States, in which case you can use um, you know, ShipBob, Dollar Fulfillment, um, ShipFusion, things like that. Uh, or you could self-fulfill. You can um, purchase in bulk from your sourcing agent or Alibaba and kind of um, fulfill the orders yourself. Basically that way it makes it more customized as well. So if you have the patience, you can do that as well. But at this point, it's not really about dropshipping anymore. It's actually building e-commerce brand. So that's what you want to do in the full scaling phase. Just a few more bonuses. During this uh, scaling phase, the full scaling phase, you want to look into other things like setting up retargeting campaigns, of course. Um, you want to diversify your traffic. For example, you can run brand search campaigns. Um, you have to add more products related to your winning product because you just want to upsell more um, related products to them, especially if you're running a niche store. You want to be building up your social media page. That's really important uh, by posting more lifestyle photos or product photos. So um, Instagram is actually really good for this um, to build up a following, and uh, but it's really niche dependent. So I can't really say for everyone. And you're going to be working with influencers as well from Instagram. Um, for more custom photos. So you can work with micro influencers to, uh, for example, if you're in a beauty niche, it's more relevant towards a wider variety of um, women or girls. So you can basically just send them the item, especially if um, when uh, the item is like perceived, high perceived value, they're actually really thankful that you're sending them the item because they look really expensive. And especially if you really get, if you have really good packaging, like um, Hey Silky Skin or like all these big brands like Snow Teeth Whitening. So if you're making if you're making everything really customized, then it's definitely they'll definitely be really grateful and want to work with you. So make sure you work on packaging. And um, another golden nugget is to make sure that you're giving it to them like some kind of gift. So like just a welcome gift with like a bunch of letters and stuff like that to make it more personalized and uh, make it seem like they're gonna like it more. Um, at this point, you should also be testing more products in the same niche, um, just because you want to find you know multiple winners just to keep that cash flow going. Um, if you have the capital, you can hire actually a product research team or just a per one person in particular just to help you with the product research. Um, usually they have more experiences than you but it really depends on the niche but um, these are not just typical product researchers like from general stores you have to find particularly like for your niche so it might be hard to find makes it take some time but it's worth it in the end because um, it's going to make life a lot easier for you um, in terms of workload. You're also going to be doing email marketing at the back end. Um, uh, preferably you want to be hiring a professional this way um, basically you can find one from Upwork or anything like that um, you would pay anywhere from about 500 to 1000 a month um, depending on the country they're in and their experience but um, it could be quite expensive you know 1k a month that's a lot to people and uh, but you know if you're really, if you're really doing like five six figures a month then it shouldn't matter too much it shouldn't eat your budget especially if they're really proficient at email marketing they can actually bring in a lot of good results and um, one way, one thing to note is that it's important to make sure that your customer experience is in place and you've you know, given a good quality product because email marketing won't work if you just, you know, just regularly drop, drop shipping with really long shipping times, bad quality products and no quality control. So make sure you already have all the things that we noted down below already, um, we mentioned just now, before you do email marketing or else you're not going to get much results because once you set out a sequence basically or a newsletter, People might just complain, saying, "Oh, I never received this product. The quality is so shit. You know why? You know why would I even bother buying from your store um, when your quality sucks and things like that?" So, you want to make sure your quality is really good as well. So that's about it. This is going to be the overview and a blueprint from zero to 100k. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe, like the video, and tells me that you know you like and enjoy the content, and comment down below to enter the giveaway or let me know what you think. So um, that's it for me today. Um, Sorry, it's kind of empty for this room because I'm actually moving out. Um, I wanted to make this video before I moved out and leave the country. So um, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.